How to play bump in volleyball? How to prevent errors on the bump? What is the ideal position of the arms, legs and body when playing forearm pass? What exercises should you do with or without the ball? I will answer this and much more in this video. I will also explain you the difference between active and passive bump. For a arm pass or the bump is not easy, you know that yourself. The ball sometimes doesn't listen to us on the bump. And that's normal, because we play the bump with our forearms and we don't have a natural feel in our forearms. We have to build that feeling for the ball. But it's not just the feel for the ball and the position of the hands, it's also about the position of the legs and the body when playing the bump. But if you look at the best liberals in the world, it looks like the bump is uh, simple, as if uh, passing a good float surf or a hard jumping surf is easy. It's not. That's why I want to give you a lot of helpful tips and advice, not only for beginners, but also for advanced players or those who make errors on the bump. First, let's go to the position of the hands. Uh, we need to keep our arms uh, maximally extended on the bump and in the vast majority of cases in front of our body when touching the ball. The palms should face forward with the fingers spread in the initial position, then bring the hands together in front of the body. Ideally, you should have no gap between your forearms. Also, the forearms are locked as if uh, locked together tightly during the bump and our shoulders are relaxed, uh, ready to react for the incoming ball. The second essential thing uh, to get the most uh, surface area on the bump is to arch your back, like some old uh, grandmothers have. Stand up as you would for a bump, hence again starting disconnected uh, at the point of connection, arch your back and this will free your shoulders forward and allow you to bring your forearms more together to create big platform. Also the body needs to be leaning forward when uh, playing the bump. The idea is to create space between the body and the hands to possibly play the ball not only in front of the body but also when the ball will fly to the right or the left or when a hard hit is coming at us and we need to absorb its energy and make a backward motion with our hands. A straight stance and a back straightened when playing bump is a bad choice, avoid it. And don't forget the legs, we don't play bump with our hands, we don't move our arms above shoulder level. Instead, for good ball control, we have to bend our knees and then lift up when we touch the ball. We can play the bump on outstretched legs with our butts out. This lifting is not just lifting up, but also forward. The hands should always be pointing forward at about a 45 degree angle, because we almost always play the ball forward on the bump for a distance of 5 or more meters. Also, when you are waiting for jump serve, you can have your hands uh, on your tights. Uh, even the volleyball stars do this. It's not a mistake. You just have to keep your knees bent, uh, lean forward, your body weight on the front half of your feet uh, so you can make a quick movement if a good jump serve uh, will fly at you. At the moment of hitting the ball by the serving player, however, you must already have your arms uh, loosened along your body. They can no longer be resting on your knees. Also avoid this position where your hands are on your knees uh, but your legs are extended. I definitely don't recommend uh, waiting uh, for the serve in this way. Another requirement for an excellent uh, bump in my opinion is to have your arms extended and immediately join them together in a bump with your elbows locked. This will minimize hand movements and also make you much quicker in reaction to the ball. If you keep your arms bent, uh, you still have to stretch your elbows uh, before connecting into the bump and uh, that is an extra movement that costs you some time. And if you keep your arms extended, you can still react uh, quickly to the ball flying up and play it with your overhead pass. It's uh, just that in defense or receiving, if you have chosen uh, your position well, most balls will fly into your bump. That's why I recommend uh, keeping your arms extended uh, lower, palms about uh, hip level. As I mentioned, the bump is not just played with the hands, uh, but we involve the legs. And since we play the bump uh, mostly in front of us, the movement of the legs and body should be forward. That's why in this uh, simulation of re preparing for the bump, our body makes a forward movement when we touch the ball. We must also not keep our feet uh, together when we want to play the bump, even when stepping forward. Then you will not have stability. Therefore, always try to keep your feet at least uh, shoulder width apart when you are bumping. And of course, keep your knees bent. Now let's look at a few exercises without the ball. Exercises that you don't just have to do at practice, but you can do them at home as well. Even if you do them without a ball, do them properly. 
We'll start by working forward in a low stance. Uh, throughout the exercise we keep our knees bent and don't lift up uh, into the outstretched legs. Our arms are extended and uh, fixed throughout the exercise. As we lift up we simulate playing the ball. Then we do the same in a backward motion. We take small steps backwards and simulate uh, playing the ball with a bump. Now we move on to sideways steps. Uh, we are in a low stance and we are taking small steps across the court. You can also add uh, movement with your hands uh, to simulate playing the ball. And then we do the same thing uh, on the other side. If you do these exercises properly, you will find uh, that uh, these positions where you are in the low stance hurt. It's hard on your tight muscles, uh, your legs were hurt. On the other hand, uh, in these positions you are going to create the best conditions uh, for a quality bump and uh, that's also how the best players play bump. So we have to learn from them and copy them. And I mustn't forget the simulation of uh, playing the ball next to the body, where we take a step or two back, uh, rotate the body and play the ball as if uh, next to the body. So these were the exercises without the ball. Now we are moving on to exercises focused mainly on handwork and estimating the flight path of the ball before playing the bump. Throw the ball high, as soon as the ball hits the ground, bend your knees or bring your hands together and play the ball above you. Let the ball fall, then repeat the same. The important thing is to always get your feet under the ball to play the ball in front of you, also to bend your legs and together with the movement of your arms play the ball over you. Only with this exercise can your arms end up moving above your shoulders. The second variation is that uh, you no longer catch the ball, but continue to play the bump after it hits the ground. The advantage of these exercises is that the ball does not fall on your hands uh, from a great height, so you can better develop the feel for playing the ball. We are still working with our feet in choosing where to play the bump. And we add another step uh, where we don't always let the ball fall on the ground. Instead, we do three bumps at a time before letting the ball fall to the ground. Play the ball at least 2 meters above you, so you have time to get your feet under it. And the third ball play even higher, so it bounces enough of the ground. And the final of these exercises is playing the bump continuously above you. I saw a video that uh, somewhere in Asia, where the kids did uh, this exercise for several minutes uh, without dropping the ball. But all you have to do is uh, 50 good bumps uh, with your feet involved. Now we are moving on to a few wall drills uh, where we will already simulate playing the bump uh, more authentically as in the game. Because we will play the ball not over ourselves but in front of us. We start by throwing the ball into the wall so that it bounces and we catch it with our arms outstretched uh, in front of us. We also bend our legs as we catch the ball. Now we don't catch the ball anymore, but play one bump straight uh, into the wall, then catch the ball. The important thing is to immediately after throwing the ball, join our hands in a bump. Bend our knees before playing the ball and in a forward motion play the ball ideally to the same spot uh, each time to get it back. Also alternate legs, uh, don't play with one leg uh, in front. Once you have mastered this, uh, then move on to the drill where we no longer catch the ball but play it repeatedly with the bump uh, to the wall. Still watch your technique to keep moving forward. Don't loosen your elbows uh, throughout the exercise, uh, keep your arms uh, extended. And if you'd like to improve your bump uh, much faster, check out my online course with 120 wall drills. Uh, in the course you'll find dozens of bump drills uh, where you'll do over 1000 touches uh, of the ball in 45 minutes. In the next step uh, we get uh, to the exercises over the net. Two players play a bump over the net in front of their bodies. 
their goal is to play the ball as low as possible over the net to get the feel for the bounce of the ball. Again, remember to work your feet uh, during this exercise and don't just play the bump uh, with your hands. Also, the body movement when playing uh, is forward as is following the ball. Then repeat the same thing uh, with a change, no longer playing the ball in front of the body. Instead, we always try to play the ball next to the body. Because even though it's uh, better to play the ball in front of the body, you will often get uh, into situations where it's uh, just uh, not possible and you have to play the ball next to the body. Again, we try to play exactly to the other side, as low as possible over the net. But that's not all. Because in match uh, the ball doesn't just fly at you one way. That's also why you are not going to play just one type of bump. I divide the bump into active and passive bump. What do I mean by that? I show you it uh, in examples. When an easy ball comes at you from the other side, you are always playing active bump. A bump uh, with the technique I showed you in uh, previous exercises. You actively engage your whole body in playing the ball. You play the ball together by moving your legs and hands in a forward motion, so that you play it high to the net into the hands of the setter. Then there are situations where a floating serve or a light attack uh, comes uh, flying at you. This ball doesn't fly slow anymore. It can travel up to 70 km per hour on a float serve. Now you can go full active into the ball because it will bounce away from you fast and far. You can put uh, as much energy into your legs uh, or your hands. It is still an active bump, but you have to absorb some energy of the ball already. And then there are situations where we play a passive bump. The ball is coming at us uh, from the serve or from the attack at 100 or more kilometers per hour. An active bump in these uh, cases would mean uh, bouncing the ball far beyond the opponent's court. Now we have to absorb almost all energy of the ball, we can't make a forward movement. Instead, uh, we have to estimate the flight path of the ball perfectly. We must uh, quickly bring our hands together, set them at the angle so that the ball uh, bounces uh, upwards, or make a backward motion uh, with them at the moment uh, the ball touches us to absorb its energy. And not all hard attacks uh, can be defended as well. That's why the bump uh, just isn't easy. The ball won't listen to you in a month. Uh, you need uh, practice and practice. There is a lot of repetition and well-executed exercises to come. If you do these exercises and uh, trips along with other things, uh, I guarantee your bump will be much better and you will feel more confident on it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.